to the sun-drenched tropical paradise of Isle Delfino. We're so pleased to welcome you to our beautiful home. Come enjoy a natural wonderland to which we've added the world's finest resort facilities, a spectacular amusement park, and succulent seafood. All this and more await you on Isle Delfino. Come relax and let us refresh your body and spirit. I am most concerned with the well-being of the princess in this dreadful heat. Master Mario, if you would, cross over to that shore and find some assistance. <laughs> Mario, be careful. I have a bad feeling about this. Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Show. I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing Super Mario Sunshine. This is a game that I played a ton as a kid, had a huge impact on me, and it's pretty much the first game that I think of when it comes to, you know, games related to the summer months and vacations and stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot that I could explain right now. Uh, but you know what, I might as well just let the game explain some stuff, so right here we're about to get into another cutscene, so I'll just go ahead and... Power up complete. Thank you for purchasing this item from Gab Science Incorporated. Preparing to register customer information, scanning and classifying subject data. Subject identified as Mario, resident of the Mushroom Kingdom, data storage complete. I am Flood, a flash liquidizer ultra dousing device. I hope to be of assistance. Proceeding with user instruction. Use the R button to shoot water from my tape. If you press the R button all the way down, you can stop and shoot. You can then use the control stick to aim in any direction. Press the X button to switch to the hover nozzle. You can then press the R button to hover in the air for a short time. If this tank is empty, no water can be sprayed. To refill tank, enter a body of water and press the R button. Instructions complete. Proceed. No, I do not. Now that we're done with the tutorial, let's actually get to some gameplay. Uh, plays like a, you know, if you played Mario 64, you should be pretty used to some of the controls. Unfortunately, there's no long jump in this game. Uh, but instead we have Flood. Flood has two modes here. Uh, the first one is spray and shoot, like this. Uh, the second one is the hover nozzle, which allows you to float across small gaps, so that kind of replaces the long jump for you. But other than that, you know, you've got your triple jumps. Uh, one thing that you'll be using a lot in this game, or at least I use a lot, is the spin jump. I just like using that whenever I go across gaps and stuff like that. 
Uh, there's also, you know, uh, side flipping. And I think that's pretty much it. You press Y, then you can go into this over the shoulder view, which makes it easier to spray stuff so you don't have to hold R all the way down and do stuff like this. You can also have a much easier time spraying when you have the over the shoulder view. Anyways, this is our first boss, the Goopy Piranha, I think is what it's called. Uh, this one's pretty easy, you just need to spray it when it has its mouth open like that. Do this three times and you should be done with the boss. With the defeat of this boss, we'll be able to go ahead and, uh, you know, help out the citizens who are hanging out here on this airstrip, like that guy covered in goop over there. One thing that I really like about this game is that there are some citizens covered in goop, and you can actually help them by spraying them off, and they'll be all happy about it. However, with this guy... Pfft, blah. Whoa, I really thought I was a goner. Hey, hang on, it's you! This whole mess is your fault! Hmm, strange. Oh, completely missed that somehow. Great start to the LP. <laughs> Shine. So that's Shine number one. I'm gonna be collecting uh, the main 51 Shines that you need to complete the game. There are seven necessary and each world, plus the one that we got right here, plus one that we get for the final boss. But you know what, I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's go ahead and just continue. Nice work, hmm, quite an unusual device. Is it some sort of pump? I am flood, glad to meet you. is now in session. As you are no doubt aware, someone has been senselessly defacing Fair Isle Delfino using some paint-like substance. The accused is charged with polluting our beautiful home and, yes, endangering our very way of life. Indeed, how can one not be aware of what is going on? Though it is daytime in Delfino Plaza, our poor residents tremble beneath a veil of darkness. Expert shine scholars have determined that this darkness has arisen because all of our guardians, the shine sprites, have vanished from their gathering spot at the shine gate. The reason? It's quite obvious. This horrible graffiti is to blame. Behold this sketch of the perpetrator based on eyewitness descriptions. The truth is obvious. The guilty party sits among us. It is none other than Mario! Objection! Overruled! I judge the defendant guilty as charged. I hereby order the defendant to clean this entire island. Until Isle Delfino is completely free of his vile handiwork, Mario shall not be allowed to leave. Court adjourned! This appears to be quite a predicament, Mario. Data analysis verifies that the island's inhabitants are indeed troubled by pollution, but the pollution itself is not the main problem. Mario, you witnessed this object at the airstrip, correct? It is a shine sprite. Shine sprites are the source of power on Isle Delfino. They used to gather in great numbers at the shine gate. But the graffiti incident has polluted the island and most of the shine sprites have fled. There is no longer any power to support the peaceful lifestyle of the islanders. It is most pitiable. The only way to ensure the return of the shine sprites is to keep the island from becoming any dirtier. The perpetrator is likely at work even as we speak. And you, Mario, are being treated as a criminal. Tomorrow we must do our best to resolve this situation. Go straight that way. You can't miss the mess now. Your first job's to get rid of all that ugliness. And remember, we'll be watching you, pal. We'll know if you start slacking off.
Alrighty, Delfino Plaza. This is gonna be our hub world. This is sort of like our Peach's Castle from Mario 64. Uh, apologies if I compare this game a lot to Mario 64. It's just that, you know, they're the first two mainline 3D Mario games, so of course there are gonna be tons of similarities that I wanna point out. And plus, Mario 64 is a very popular game, so it's easy to make analogies, uh, you know, comparing it to a, another very similar game. Right down at the bottom is the DEBS alert. It seems several people have gone missing near the Grand Pianta statue in Bianco Square. I'm not sure if there's a way to make that go faster, but yeah, I'll just... I won't really read them out that much, but you can of course read them at the very bottom of the screen. Uh, right here we have uh, a boss fight that you're going to see is very similar uh, to our previous boss fight. We have to fight another Goopy Piranha. I don't know if that's the official name, but that's what I'm going to call it. Uh, this is a boss that's going to appear a ton in this game, especially near the beginning here. So, I guess it's just here so that you can master your skills with Flood. You know, make sure you're doing everything right. Princess, look! On the statue's head! As is typical in a Mario game, Peach has been kidnapped. Luckily, she's actually fairly easy to get back right now. Just gotta spray the Shadow Mario with our uh, Flood here. And dang, he's already down. Ow, 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 not fair, completely unfair. You shouldn't be allowed to use tools like that. So now that Peach is safe, it's time to just chase after Shadow Mario. He's heading for the square, go get him. He's going to try to evade us right here by going up onto the rooftops. Just make sure you tail him right here. His final destination here is this statue right over here. He paints an M on the wall there. And what we want to do is spray it, and this will be our gateway to new worlds. Bianco Hills Episode 1, Road to the Big Windmill. Alrighty, this is our first shine that we're going after, or technically second if you count the airstrip one, but, you know, that's sort of like a bonus thing. I don't know, well not really a bonus thing, because it's required, but... You know, it's kind of unrelated to our... Uh, that's not a good descriptor either. Dang it, we're on episode one and I'm already messing up with my words. What am I... I just like to think of this as the first true shine that we're going after. Uh, right here... So, f funny thing. This boss may look a bit familiar to you. Yep, fighting the same boss over again. Shadow Mario seems to have... Uh, disappeared. So our only thing we can do right now is fight this guy right here. There we go, he's down once more. Now once he's defeated, he goes ahead and spawns the shine. Well, first he makes this uh, hill appear here. I was going to say ramp, but I don't know. Ramp makes it sound like it's man-made, whereas a hill is more natural. Now you could get this shine, but you could if you wanted to. You could also just go up the path here and get the shine way up there with that guy who we're going to get to in a second. But you know what? I might as well just get them in order. No reason not to. That's shine number two. Funny little detail is that if you ever get covered in goop while you're fighting a boss fight, all of that goop will stay on Mario until you, like, jump into water or something like that. So even in the, uh, Shine Get animation, you'll still be seeing stuff like that. 
Uh, but for the early parts of this game, Peach is just hanging out here. You know, we kind of spoiled Shadow Mario's plans there. And so there's not much we can do right now, except uh, unless we wanted to go ahead and get optional shines. But I'm just getting all of the required shines here, so let's hop right back in to episode number two. Bianco Hills, episode two, down with Petey Piranha. So our goal now is to go ahead and make our way up to the windmill right there, and uh, while we're going back there, we're kind of just retreading old ground that we already explored like five seconds ago, so I'll just casually talk to you guys. Uh, the reason that I wanted to do this Let's Play is because I have two huge projects that I've been working on for a little while now that are coming up back to back. And so, before I get, get into those, I thought that I'd go ahead and lighten things up with a nice, you know, it's going to be a real short LP, and, you know, it's a fun game. I was about to say easy game, but there are some parts of this game that can be quite frustrating, as, I've, as I'm sure you've heard. Uh, there are three sh shines in this game that are all optional, but are all very annoying to get, very iconic or infamous I should probably say because they're very well known for being very bad uh, putting that aside for now now we need to make our way up the windmill here that red M if you spray that then you'll get a blue coin and what blue coins do is once you get 10 you, there will be a shop later in the game where you can trade those in and for every 10 blue coins you get an extra shine sprite there are a total of 150 shine, or no, 120 shines in the game, but 50 are, there are only 51 that are absolutely required. Our second new boss fight is Petey Piranha, quite the iconic character. He has made his reappearance in many spin-offs like, you know, baseball and pretty sure he appeared in the soccer games and he's probably appeared in a few Mario parties at this point. I messed that up. What you want to do uh, is you want to wait for him to open his mouth then start... Ah, oh, come on! Wait for him to open his mouth and start spraying him with water. Once he's completely filled up, you just want to hop on top of his stomach and ground pound him. Just do this two more times and you should be good. He sprays out goop, uh, goop that spawns in different enemies. You want to go ahead and get rid of that as much as you can, just so that you don't have extra enemies to deal with. I messed that up completely on my own. Uh, I forgot that the y-axis wasn't normal. Uh, there is a 3D All-Stars re-release of this game, and I guess I technically could have played through that version, uh, but I don't have all my recording stuff for the Nintendo Switch set up in my room yet, but I do have an easy way to record the GameCube version, so I thought I'd go ahead and do that version. Anyways, one more hit, and we're done with this boss fight. Whoop. Phased right through him there. Whoops. Once we're done with him, he just turns into a brown pile of goo. And that is shine number three. Alright, so what that was right over there, what just appeared, 
is something that I'm going to get into a bit more later, but basically once you start getting more shines, then more things will start appearing around the map that'll lead to new worlds. This game isn't really linear. Uh, you can more or less tackle missions and go to different worlds whenever, so it's not like you have to go to world 1, then world 2, then world 3. You can just hop around as long as you've got enough shines to unlock them. For me though, I'm just going to do them in order, because uh, there's not really a reason not to. Uh, Bianco Hills, Episode 3, The Hillside, the Hillside Cave Secret. Alright, so this is the first of these uh, secret missions, which is something that I'm sure if you've played through this game, you either absolutely love or you absolutely loathe. For me, it's a bit of a mix of both. For some of these levels, I think they're really fun and, you know, invite some fun challenge, but some of the other ones can get so tediously obnoxious. Is that even a proper sentence? They can get just so annoying that it's not even fun anymore. Anyways, you just want to flip your way up here and enter through this cave. Shadow Mario just completely snatches the Flood, uh, and in place of the Flood, we get this awesome uh, music, the, the an acapella version of the music from Super Mario Bros. 1. Uh, these levels, for some... Whoop. First death of the series. I don't know if I'm going to keep a counter, but uh, if I do, that's death number one. Uh, so for some, who f I'm not even gonna try to come up with an excuse for that one. I just suck. <laughs> Alright, for real this time. So, for some who thought that the Flood gameplay was more or less a gimmick that was just trying to, you know, doing something for the sake of doing something new, these levels were awesome for them because this was more or less just kind of, you know, Mario 64, I guess. Like, not in terms of level design, but more or less just in terms of platforming without flood. So I'm, I can see why that was exciting for a lot of people there. Alrighty, we've already seen that animation, so I'll go ahead and just skip over it. Of course, whenever we see new animations, I'll just let it play through for the full time, but for some of these, we'll be seeing them, like, ten different times, so I don't think anybody will be missing anything if we skip over them. Bianco Hills Episode 4, Red Coins of Windmill Village. Yes, red coins do re reappear from Super Mario 64, and yes, they are just as annoying as they were in that game. Uh, this first one isn't too bad, of course, you know. You know, it's the first world. The levels aren't going to be too, too tough. Uh, unless you're me, in which I, in which case I already died twice. But, you know what? Uh, yeah, uh, I'll just be quickly showing off the locations on screen. That was pretty cool, actually. I ground pounded into grabbing that one red coin. Uh, speaking of returning missions from uh, Super Mario uh, 64, 100 coin missions also reappear, and of course they are necessary for 100%. And, uh, you know, they weren't really that fun in Mario 64, and they definitely aren't fun in this game. Uh, so that's just more or less why I didn't want to do a 100% playthrough of this game for my Let's Play. Just because, 
it's not really that fun to 100% this game, at least in my opinion. Uh, I don't, I haven't actually 100% of this game before. I've gotten like fairly close. Uh, but yeah, I could just never really fully 100% complete it. Alrighty, we've got Bianco Hills Episode 5, Petey Piranha Strikes Back, a Star Wars reference of all things. I mean, I suppose it makes sense, if you're gonna start calling your missions episodes, then there's bound to be at least one Star Wars reference or something similar along the lines at some point. Uh, this mission, I remember when I was like five years old, absolutely struggling with this mission. Uh, just because I didn't fully understand how this boss fight works. Uh, PD Piranha does return as a boss fight now, uh, but he's a bit different than how he worked before. There are some similarities, of course, but uh, it's quite a different fight from the one at the windmill, so yeah. The only one, the only boss fights being recycled really are uh, the uh, goopy piranhas and one boss fight that I'll get to later. But you know what? That's for later. Uh, so you shoot that weird. I don't know. It, it always looked like a pig to me when I was younger. That weird pink thing. Shoot it at PD Piranha while he's sleeping, and now he's just gonna fly around, and you just want to wait for him to stop. And once he stops, he'll fall when you shoot him with water. I said that sentence weird. And now this is pretty much just what you did for the windmill boss fight. Just wait for him to open his mouth, spray him with water. He has a few new attacks like that tornado that he just threw a little bit ago. Uh, but other than that, he's a pretty similar fight. I remember when I was a kid, I thought that I was supposed to use those pink things to shoot him down. I don't know where I got that information from. Uh, but yeah, you could just spray him with normal water, and he should be good. Let's see. Alrighty, there we go. Alright, tosses another tornado our way. Alright, that's hit number two. But yeah, I would always try to hit him with the pink things, and I would struggle because I would try to shoot them, and then other pink things would get in the way. I'm not sure the official name for those. Uh, but they would always get in the way, and I would just struggle at this for hours and just not be able to figure it out for some reason. Uh, I've probably mentioned it on the channel at some point, but I am just not the best at video games. <laughs> I mean, I love video games, of course. My entire, you know, channel is named after them, and I play video games for, well, not for a living, but for a passion project, I guess. I guess that's what this channel is. Anyways, that's PD Piranha down for a second time. Second time is in the second time we've defeated him third time we've hit him this boss fight. Shine will spawn right over here, so just stand over here and you'll be able to quickly collect it. And there we go. You know what, this first episode might go on a bit longer than expected, but I'll go ahead and knock out these last two missions uh, and then end off the episode there, and I'll have completed Bianco Hills, uh, so that'll be awesome. 
Episode number six, The Secret of the Dirty Lake. So now the entire area is just filled with goo, or at least the lakes and rivers are. Uh, and that's obviously not good, as we can see over here. Uh, that guy who was frozen for a second. Uh, he's completely co covered in goo. So yeah, it's just a... Overall, we're not happy. The Piantas, which are the names of the tree folk there, they aren't happy. Uh, no one's happy with the situation except for Shadow Mario, I guess, so... We're gonna go ahead and stop. It's another secret mission, so... You know how that's gonna turn out. Just make your way over here. You can triple jump or spin jump off of there. Use Flood to hover on over. And you should make your way to the logs. You might take a bit of damage there, but that should be fine. I wouldn't open this box right here because that... Uh, that's something I'll explain later. It'll make sense uh, when I explain it a bit later. Shadow Mar Mario takes our stuff again. And this level is quite a step up from the previous secret, secret mission. Yeah, we've got that whole level to go through. Uh, these flippy platforms are... Uh, they can be a bit annoying to deal with, uh, but you you know how it's going, you know the general pattern, you know, uh, you know how, how and when it's going to flip, so as long as you're prepared for that, you should be good there. The red and blue color scheme of those reminded me that, uh, someone pointed this out, and now I, uh, always think about it whenever I replay through uh, this game. Uh, both this and Sonic Adventure 2 are very similar, so it's kind of funny that I played that game and this game back-to-back. -back. I wish that was intense, intentional, but no, I'd only just realized this a couple minutes ago. Uh, but, uh, both games are similar in the fact that your main character is put in jail because he's framed by a dark version of you called Shadow that people don't realize isn't your character because, I don't know, they don't have eyes, I guess. I mean, it has the same, like, venue, like, vague shape as you, but it's not really, it doesn't really look similar at all. Anyway, shine number seven. Oh, and also, continuing with the SA2 analogy, uh, or not really analogy, more more like comparison, uh, both appeared on the GameCube uh, in the early 2000s as one of, like, the first, as one of the, as the company's, like, second uh, three mainline 3D game uh, for that series, and both have a red and blue color scheme, uh, both rivalries, I mean, it's just, you know, flipped. Anyway, Shadow Mario on the loose. Speaking of Shadow Mario, uh, all of the, each, like, seventh mission is a Shadow Mario chase section. So, depending on how good you are with the spray nozzle, this will either be an incredibly easy and short level, or it'll be quite difficult. Quite easy for me, though. I'll remember this. Sure you will. And that is the ending of Bianco Hills. And I guess that'll go ahead and be the end of our episode here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And in the next episode, we're going to go ahead and head on over to the docks there and investigate that pile of goo and see what it's hiding from us. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye! <laughs>